Hi everybody. In this video we are looking at monoclonal antibodies and these are antibodies which we produce in the lab to help us diagnose and treat various diseases. So first of all we'll look at what we mean by monoclonal antibodies in comparison to polyclonal antibodies. So if we have a pathogen, let's say a bacterial cell, we know that that uh, pathogen will have lots of antigens on its surface and there will be many thousands of different antigens there. I've just shown three different antigens here. So if this pathogen enters the body then it will encounter uh, various types of cells of the immune system. So we're just interested in here in the B cells. So here we've got a B cell with an antigen receptor and this antigen receptor matches this little red triangle antigen here. So when this B cell encounters the pathogen it will be selected for and it will undergo prolif proliferation and differentiation. This B cell also has antigen receptors that match one of the antigens so it can be selected for and so can this one. So as a result what you will end up with is antibodies in the blood which have been produced by the plasma cells that came from these original B cells. So this B cell here would have to differentiate, uh, proliferate, differentiate, become plasma cells, and then it would make these antibodies. So because there are lots of different antigens on the surface of this pathogen, you will end up with lots of different antibodies, which have slightly different um, receptors on them. This is what we mean by polyclonal. Several different B cells have all been activated and cloned themselves, so we have antibodies in the blood from several different clonal lines. However, often if we're doing um, in, uh, in medicine, we actually just need one particular kind of antibody. So what we want is only these antibodies which have come only from this B cell that's been selected for. If we do that, then we would say we've got monoclonal antibodies. So at the moment in the blood here, you can see there's just one kind of uh, antibody monoclonal. It's come from the clone of one activated B cell. Now the problem is that even though this is very useful in medicine, this is not what would happen naturally. You will never have blood which has only got one kind of antibody because the immune system is constantly reacting to many different antigens and there will always be thousands and thousands of different antibodies in the blood. But this is what we want. Monoclonal antibodies is what we want. So we need to think about how we can achieve that. And it's quite difficult. So MABS is the uh, shorthand for monoclonal antibodies and it's difficult to produce monoclonal antibodies. When uh, scientists do it, they tend to use um, mice. So if you imagine that this is the body of a mouse, and as we've just seen, if we introduce that same pathogen, then we would end up um, with our B cells in there being selected for, and then they would proliferate, differentiate, and we'd end up with plasma cells. So these are the plasma cells which have originated from this B cell when it gets activated. So these plasma cells can produce the antibody, uh, which is identical to this one. So these are the plasma cells in our example that we want, our monoclonal antibodies, but the mouse is also going to have plasma cells that can produce these other um, types of antibodies to match different antigens, and we don't want those. So what we could do in theory is we could take these plasma cells or, um, or this B cell out of the mouse and we could try to uh, grow them in culture so we get lots of them. That's the idea. The problem is if you take B lymphocytes um, out of culture and then you allow them to divide and produce our plasma cells, plasma cells will not divide. Um, they don't divide at all. They wouldn't divide in the mouse either. So we could take the B lymphocytes out of the mouse into culture um, and they divide and produce plasma cells, but those plasma cells wouldn't then be able to divide. So, so we could have some of our plasma cells, but the problem is that these B lymphocytes don't survive very long. So we can't produce many plasma cells and therefore we can't produce many antibodies in culture because the B cells are short-lived and the plasma cells don't divide. 
And of course, what we can't do as well is we can't go into the mouse and just pick out all of these plasma cells because that's just, it's an impossible task because there are so many different plasma cells um, in the body. We can't just pick out individual ones. We don't have the technology to do that. Even if we could, we would still have the problem that those plasma cells would then not be able to divide. So we'd have to just... So this is why it's difficult to produce our maps. So the aim, what we're trying to do, is get our plasma cells that we want to produce our monoclonal antibodies, but make them be able to divide indefinitely so that we can extract them from the mouse and then we can continue to divide them. And of course, once we've got them, they're dividing, they will be producing antibodies. So we would have an infinite supply of antibodies if we could get these plasma cells to divide indefinitely. Luckily, uh, we can do it. And this is called the hybridoma method. So the first step is to take your mouse and you inject the mouse with the antigen that you're interested in. So in this case, it's a bacterial cell. It doesn't have to be a bacterial cell though. Any non-self antigen um, or non-self substance will work and it will invoke the immune response, triggering the mouse to produce the plasma cells uh, with the antibodies that match the non-self antigen we are interested in producing. So once the uh, mouse's immune system has um, done its thing and it's produced lots of plasma cells, we can go to the spleen, which is where you find a lot of um, the lymphocytes and a lot of plasma cells, and you can extract the plasma cells from there. So again, we don't have the technology to only extract these plasma cells of interest. We just take all of them out. Okay, so in this case it's these three, but of course there will be others as well. So any of the cells that are there, we harvest them. Then we take something called a myeloma cell. So this is a particular kind of cancer cell. So cancer cells, of course, um, the reason they're a problem is because they, uh, they, they can divide indefinitely. They're a bit like stem cells in that respect. So what scientists do is they take the plasma cells and they fuse them with the myeloma cells. So what we have now are cells which we, called, uh, we call hybridoma cells. So these cells are able to divide, which plasma cells can't normally. So they can divide and they produce the antibody that the plasma cell would have produced. So we have got our infinitely dividing plasma cells. But of course, we've still just got um, lots and lots of them and we don't know which one we actually want. We don't know which, anti which cells are producing which antibody. So what we have to do is we separate all of the cells out. We don't know which, which, what they're doing yet. We don't know which antibodies they're producing. We can't tell that just by looking at them, but we test separate them and clone them. So each of our uh, plasma cells will begin the process of division, making lots of clones of itself, which remember a plasma cell normally can't do. And eventually, will end up with um, large numbers of cloned plasma cells. And these are separated out on sort of like a dish. So we can see each individual uh, clump of cells. And we know that all the cells here are identical to one another and they're therefore producing the same kind of antibody. All the cells here are identical because they've come from the same original plasma cell and they produce the same antibody and so on. So once we've done that, we've got our separate um, groups of cells, then we can test them. We can test them. Uh, sorry if you can hear that noise. Uh, we can test them for antibody production. So basically we can um, do something like um, introduce the antigen that we are interested in into each of these and see which of them respond to that antigen. And that will be the antibody that we want. So once we do that, we can identify, in this case, that we want these cells here. They are going to be producing the antibody we want. We can get rid of the other cells, and then you can continue to grow this cell line. As they're growing, they're going to be producing the monoclonal antibodies, antibodies that have all come from this one original clone, so they're all identical, and extract them. So we've produced monoclonal antibodies and we have got now, we've got these cells here, we have got a, a, essentially an infinite supply. We can just keep making this particular kind of monoclonal antibody um, 
almost indefinitely. Before we can use them for diagnosis and treatment though, uh, there's one final step, we have to do something called humanization. Um, and this is because these of course have come originally from the mouse's immune system. So they're mouse antibodies. So um, it doesn't matter exactly what the process is, you don't need to know about that, but they have to be modified uh, somehow so that they are like human antibodies rather than mouse antibodies. It will be to do with the constant region at the end. So the, uh, this end here, which is the end that attaches to the antigen, will not be affected, but it will do something probably at this end to make them human-like so that when you introduce them into humans, um, when we're doing our diagnosis and treatment, the body doesn't attack them as if they are foreign. Okay, so that's the hybridoma method to produce monoclonal antibodies. Thank you very much.